Uh, this is uh, to refresh our memory <clears throat> about the uh, fluorescence detection. For example, here we talk about three color fluorescence, and this is the conventional technique when we when we have um, ability to use antibodies, primary antibodies raised in different host species, and here we work, we have rabbit primary antibody, mouse, and goat, and then we are detecting them using secondary antibodies uh, raised against rabbit, against mouse, and against goat. So there's no expected cross interference or cross reaction of, for example, anti-goat secondary antibody with the mouse primary antibody, or, you know, anti-mouse antibody with goat, so we're, <clears throat> we're doing good. So this is a very con convenient uh, and easy way to do multicolor fluorescence. But now let's say if what is going to happen if we have the primary antibodies raised in the same host species and we want to detect them using different colors. If we use, for example, primary rabbit antibodies and then anti-rabbit secondary antibodies conjugated to different fluorophores, all the secondary antibodies will cross-react with primary antibody. In the end, we will see complete overlap in colors and we will not be able to tell which color depicts which antigen. That's the major problem. That's quite easy to understand. Um, there is a technique uh, that's been actually uh, described a long time ago and has been uh, published in the uh, Journal of Histochemistry and Cytochemistry when people can use tyramide signal amplification technique and so-called antibody stripping protocol. Uh, the way uh, how the whole uh, reaction works before we go into the protocol itself, I would like to remind you what a tyramide signal amplification allows to accomplish. So we incubate a tissue section of cells with primary antibodies followed with anti-primary antibodies conjugated to enzyme, host radish peroxidase, HRP. We'll get this sandwich here. And then we add uh, tyramide labeled with fluorescent dyes. HRP will activate this tyramide and it can now bind to uh, tyrosine in proteins to its phenol group and it binds so tightly that at the end we actually don't need the presence of primary and secondary antibodies. And the tyramide activated tyramide binds to these phenol groups and proteins, not only in the protein of interest, but in proteins adjacent to the protein of interest. That's how tyramide amplification works, uh, so to speak, in a nutshell. To view the full video of this and all of our other webinars for bioscientists at the bench, please visit bitesizebio.com slash webinars.